It finally came! In this box, we have the cheapest gaming system that you can buy on AliExpress, probably. And the reason that I'm really excited to have a look at it is because the previous AliExpress system that I bought was way better than I was expecting, aside from the thermal paste bukake and the dead RAM kit that it came with. Uh, there was also the fact that the AIO was only mounted with one screw and kind of dangling there. The cable management actually wasn't great either. And then there was just the general used feeling of all of the components in there. Um, but other than that, it was way better than I was expecting. So this little PC has some big shoes to fill. But before we get into that, it's time for a word from today's video sponsor, Manscaped. Today's video is sponsored by Manscaped, a company that cares more about your balls than you do. Manscaped sent over their Perfect Package 3.0 for me to check out for this video, which includes a lawnmower 3.0, which has a badass 7,000 RPM motor in it that's still safe near your Julies because it's got a ceramic blade that won't cut you. The Perfect Package also has the Crop Preserver and Crop Reviver, both of which make your balls smell nice without any added chemicals. And for a limited time, you get two free gifts, which include the Shed Travel Bag, which is really awesome, and some Manscaped Boxer Briefs that make you feel like a Nacho Libre wrestler. And I have to say, after trying the Lawnmower 3.0 on my Untamed Man Jungle, it works really well. So if this sounds good to you, go to Manscaped.com today to get 20% off plus free international shipping and the two free gifts when you use the promo code David at manscaped.com. Your balls and body will thank you. The system in this box cost me about 366 US dollars, which in the world of pre-builds usually just gets you a bit of sand rubbed in your eyes. So I'm not that confident about the state of the system. Also, the fact that the box seems to have suffered a hernia at some point doesn't help much. <laughs> it really is covered in battle scars. Oh, that is packing material that I've actually never seen used for a PC before. And then in here, we've got a hunt key box. Ooh. Hopefully there's a PC in this box. There is! Um, what happened to the graphics card? Is that, uh... Oh! I think this makes more sense. Ooh, oh, there we go. Okay, in the moment of truth. Hey, it's actually got a tempered glass side panel tempered plastic side panel. And here we have a case that on first impression actually doesn't look that bad. We've got some faux metal on the front of the case and then what looks like an RGB strip along the side. But then you look a bit closer and notice what is some of the most restricted front airflow I've ever seen on a case. But you know what they say about front ventilation. It's the thought that counts. And then around the back, we've got some rear IO, which would have been considered limited in the 1950s and um, no, no graphics card. And then finally, the power supply looks like this stuff of night terrors. So let's open it up and see if we can track down the graphics card. The acrylic side panel actually cracked in shipping, although that could have been my fault. <laughs> the first thing that you notice when you open up the system, aside from the power supply that looks suspiciously like the ignition source for an IED, is this awesome looking cooler. It's all whited out and stuff. There's some more plastic and... Oh, here we go. This, I'm hoping, is the graphics card. But before we open that up, let's have a look at the rest of the system. Now under that enormous cooler is an X79 Xeon CPU that's running in one of those Chinese X79 motherboards that Craft Computing does videos on semi-regularly, which actually makes it a very interesting hardware configuration for a budget gaming system. Now in terms of the RAM, it's our old favorite, a single eight gig stick. But for a $366 PC, I guess it's forgivable. What isn't forgivable though, is that they barely screwed the motherboard down. Look at all those empty screw holes. And the result of that lack of screws is, although to be fair, I don't know if that's because it's not screwed down well enough or the fact that the motherboard backplate is made out of like paper mache. Oh no, the VRM heatsink has actually been ripped off. Look. <laughs> 
let me let me just just there we go that, that's okay right on a positive note it does come with an ssd which is by a company called huananzi around the back the cable management's not a complete disaster although there was definitely a lot of stuffing going on here and then up here you can see the single screw fighting valiantly to keep the vrm heatsink stuck down <laughs> with that let's have a look at the graphics card uh now in all honesty, this is actually a really smart way to ship it because it means that it's not going to like rip out of the PCI Express slot while shipping or whatever. Oh, in here we have a, a screwdriver. That's awesome. Not many pre-builds come with their own screwdriver. Ugh. Wait, wait a minute. No way. Now, I'm not immediately going to say that this is a fake graphics card, but I'm pretty sure that I've seen this shroud design on Wish.com. However, Hunanzi is potentially a fairly not sketchy company, so maybe this is a legitimate HD 6770, and they just happen to use the same cooler as fake graphics cards. Okay, so now I'm going to put the definitely not a fake graphics card back into the AliExpress system, and we're going to see how it runs. And I have no choice but to use the included screwdriver. Oh wow, this is definitely the worst screwdriver I've ever used in my life. Let's see what happens. Oh, we've got a lot of RGB going. I like the way that the RGB glistens off the crack in the plastic. It is already, um quite noisy. It sounds like it may be the graphics card. Let's have a look at how it identifies that graphics card. Um, because you should be able to tell pretty early on if it's... Oh, no. No, no, no. I think we're okay. I think we're okay. But, oh, GPU-Z to check out that graphics card. Because GPU-Z is one of the best ways to check the authenticity of a graphics card. 6700 series okay so according to according to gpu z we actually have an hd 6750 in here now according to the listing we're supposed to have a 6770 but despite that little whoopsie i think we do actually have a legitimate graphics card in here what is this browser i feel like even if i could understand chinese i wouldn't be able to follow what's going on here it looks terrible what is this Location Z. Oh, this is one of those weird pieces of software that boomers use to like monitor the health of their system. I wonder if it's got like a disk defragment tool in it. That's honestly what, that's what this looks like. Now let's see how the $360 system actually runs games, starting off with GTA 5. In terms of the graphic settings that the game recommends, it's actually just throwing us straight to 800 by 600, which is the real gamer resolution, as we all know. Uh, even with even with 800 by 600, we're still almost hitting our VRAM limit here. No way, that's a really good start. Look at that. It's about 70 frames per second. This is actually not too bad. It looks like garbage because of the resolution, but... Yo, this actually works. Okay, let's try a higher resolution here. Let's take it to 720p. We're still sitting at about 70 frames per second. Okay, let's let's try the unthinkable. Let's see if we can push it to 1080p. 900p, I guess, if that's what you can call that. Okay, so this is the highest resolution that GTA 5 will let us run it at. Uh, 1440 by 900. And it's still running well. We're sitting just under 50 frames per second. Very playable. Even when you get closer and, like, the details and stuff load in. Like, this is, this is a better gaming experience than playing GTA 5 on, like, a PS3, for example. This is surprisingly good next up is csgo which is a lot braver with the auto settings than gta 5 was look at that it's mostly on high we're not going to try and game on high because nobody plays csgo on high okay there we go that makes more sense apply no way it's actually running at about 80 frames per second the temperatures are amazing we're sitting at about 60 c with the gpu 
and about 4060 on the CPU. Very impressive stuff, AliExpress person. And finally, we gotta do Fortnite for the kiddos. I'm just gonna try and run the game in competitive settings. So let's see if we can do like 100% 3D resolution, everything on low, and then view distances on epic. Hopefully this works. So we're currently sitting at about 75% resolution scale for 1080p. And yeah, this is not gonna cut it. If you actually wanna win any PvP engagements, like this is this is not gonna go well. Let's try and drop the settings more. 50% resolution scale at 1080p. Oh, it looks so terrible. Oh, that is, oh, is that a player? I can't see if that's a player or not. I, I think it I think it may be. Let's try one more step down and see how that goes. So we're gonna do 25. Oh yeah, there we go. Even with this mosaic mode enabled, we're still not, we're still not getting 60 frames per second. I mean this is how all the pros play, right? Is with 25% resolution scale. Oh, I don't have ammo left. Come on. C yeah. <laughs> In conclusion, once firing up the system, it all went better than I was expecting. I was half expecting it to release flesh-eating bacteria into my house, but still, the graphics god seems to be real, despite the fact that it has a fake graphics god cooler on it for some reason. The power supply didn't immediately end human civilization once powered on, so that's a good thing, I guess. And if your expectations are low enough, you can actually game on this system. In fact, about a year ago, I did a video on a $380 gaming PC from Amazon, and it performed worse than this one did, so good job, right? random AliExpress seller. With that, it brings me to the end of the video. If you enjoyed it, please do like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one, and until the next video, bye bye